Hey, what's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? This is, uh, this is me again. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, I am going to be working on my first arm tattoo. So this will be my first tattoo that's not on my leg. Um, obviously, if it's on my arm, it's not on my leg. Um, but uh, I wanted to kind of focus on a couple of things. First, let me go ahead and thing I say every time, not a professional tattoo artist, um, not necessarily looking to break into the industry, zero idea, uh, you know, not zero idea. I've learned, I've learned a lot over the past uh, four or five weeks. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with the uh, with progress. Um, but uh, sterilization is something that, you know, they take care of on a very professional level. And as much as I try to sterilize, I realize that I have animals running around. If there's animals running around, place that you go to get a tattoo uh, don't get a tattoo there uh, I mean unless it's like a I don't know like a non-allergenic hairless stuffed cat or something I don't know something um that doesn't pee or poop ever so uh that being said um yeah so I'm going to be working on arm tattoo let me give you a little little backstory here. You can go ahead and you can kind of see what it is that we're working on today with the 4464. So I'm going to stretch out and, you know, I know it's an uncomfortable subject for a lot of people, including myself, um, the whole mental and behavioral health aspect. So um, uh, I have been retired, medically retired from the military because of some behavioral and uh emotional health issues. Um, that being said, I, you know, did the right thing. I sought treatment. Um, I went through all the rigmarole, the hoops and cut through red tape and all that kind of stuff and had a lot of support along the way. It doesn't hold the same stigma as it used to, you know, all the things that you'll hear, you know, from other people. Um, some people say that that's not true, but I, I had a, uh, a, a very positive, um, experience with, uh, leadership uh, you know, my own personal leadership, as well as those going up the chain uh, to ensure that that I got the help that I needed. Um, a lot of the things that you talk about whenever you're going through those kind of processes, if you haven't been through those kind of processes, if you need to go through those kind of processes or coping mechanisms, coping mechanisms are really, you know, like it's a really big deal because once you realize like the state of mind that you're in, it's not like you'll ever necessarily be quote unquote normal. There is no definition psychologically of normal from what I can understand. So um, it's just in how people cope. And one of the ways uh, that you can cope, of course, you can do it unhealthily. You can cope through alcohol, drugs, you know, um, whatever, whatever addiction that you can possibly, you know, fill in there. Uh, but there are healthy coping mechanisms. And a lot of those are rather time consuming, though. So what do you do whenever you're in the moment? Right. Like that was always where, you know, I would get the hiccup. Uh, in, in my, my healing process, no matter where I was, whether I was inpatient, outpatient, whatever, like, um, and even currently in therapy, like, you know, sometimes I forget, uh, that there are things that do work rapidly and work for, you know, for me specifically. One of those things is actually a breathing technique, you know, and for, you know, some, uh, the breathing technique might be a little bit different than others, but this is the one that kind of got me. Um, it was to breathe in really rapidly for four seconds, like as much, fill your lungs as much as possible. And then I hold that for four seconds. And then I breathe out slowly, but forcefully for six seconds. And then I hold the bottom of that four seconds. And then I repeat. Now, the issue is, is that, you know, uh, you know, you have PTSD or generalized anxiety or something along those lines. You know what? This is weird. I'm just going to point this out. I am straight in the camera, but the whole room is like crooked. It's like the house tilted. All right. That being said, anyway, go back to it. You kind of look kind of weird whenever you're in the middle of a restaurant having an anxiety attack and you just start heavy breathing, right? Like that's odd. So, it, you know, but uh, you can do these things like, especially that one, you can do like, you can do it on the down low. It's not, it's not really that hard to sneak in some breaths, right? Like it's, it's not. Um, but oftentimes uh, in the thick of things, I forget. Well, hell, I've got a way to permanently remember so that's what we're going to be working on today is a permanent remembrance of my breathing technique. So 
I've got 4464. I've got it right there, like pretty close to my wrist. Um, I don't know. Camera can probably pick up a couple of other scars that might be around that area as well. Um, but nothing big, right? So uh, I used the good, uh, the good paper, the good transfer paper, so it didn't like smear out and turn crazy. Um, the thing that I'm worried the most about with this, honestly, is uh, getting a good tight, you know, spread of the skin while I'm working on it. I just don't think that's going to be possible. I'm going to try, but uh, that's not really that's not really my forte. Uh, you know, one-handed skin stretching. I haven't practiced that a whole lot, so this will be pretty good practice, right? Okay, um, I'm going to be using one of these guys, which I swore to myself I wouldn't use again for a very long time because my expertise is just not that high. However, this is a very tiny tattoo. So this is, uh, I mean, it's like, I think it's two inches wide. So it's not very big. I don't, I don't have like gigantor arms. It's very skinny. Um, used to be bigger, uh, but uh, all, the, all the muscle went down to my stomach area. So... Um, what I'm going to be working with is that very teeny tiny, instead of a standard 12 size needle, it's an eight size needle. Um, instead of what I commonly use as a seven grouping, this is a five grouping. Uh, and so this is in a liner configuration. It is extremely small, very needly, if you will. I don't know if I can kind of show that or not. It's it, that is tiny. It's a very small needle. Um, I will have to adjust and already know like this is not this is not a configuration that you want you don't want your needle poking out before you even get started so i'm going to attempt to hide that <laughs> push that back inside the uh the cartridge because again like i said that's not something that you really want now i would love to say hey guys this is going to be another half an hour tattoo i just i can't believe it like i mean it's to me, that's a that's a lucky one, right? Hey, what's going on, Turkey Noodle? How you doing, man? Sorry, I didn't see it first. Oh no, that's too far. So I like these to be sticking out farther. About I don't know. Maybe about that far. A bit farther. Yeah, that's good. Living the dream. Oh no. What happened, brother? I know it's not your dream. <laughs> it's somebody else's. Uh. <laughs> what is this? I know it. I know it. I had my first day of school today. Yeah, that was definitely a nightmare. We do some mean stuff in college. At least I think it's mean. Why would you say, why would, <laughs> yeah, back to school. I know. Why would you say, all right, in the military, there is not a single test that's meant to fail you. No, no, and this is all online, no swirly, right? But I felt like I got a swirly because in the military, there's nothing, there's no test that's meant to fail you. It's always meant to test what it is that you know. That being said, every time that you take any kind of exam or quiz or something online, it's like they tell you how many chances you get to pass. And they tell you, you know, most of the time it's like, this is attempt one out of unlimited. Right. So that's what I ran into. I ran into an attempt of X out, you know, un, out of unlimited. And so I took the test. I didn't even read that. I didn't read anything. I didn't watch the video. I just like I, I put it on and then I put it on closed captioning, but then I sped it up to two and a half times the speed. So I could, it was going too fast for me to read it. And I was like, well, this would be a good, you know, I have unlimited chances. Right. So I might as well, you know, give it a try. Right. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just give it a try. Well, these bozos went ahead and just, you know, like whatever, whatever grading company it is, was like, uh, you know, was like, uh, yeah, it's graded. And I'm like, 
I failed it, man. Well, I didn't fail it. Yeah, I did. I failed it. I failed it. I failed it. And then it wouldn't let me have any more of my quote unquote unlimited um, chances. I went back eventually and they did open it back up. I was like, yeah, I was scared to death, man. I'm like, look, you have to have like a B average to keep your whatever scholarship or what, I don't know, whatever it is. And I'm like, I was sitting there, I was dying, man. I have a feeling I'm going to blow this out because I can't, I haven't worked on arm skin. So, I mean, I hope I don't, but I also want it deep enough. It's not going to fall out. But yeah, I was pissed. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was uh it was kind of a negative experience, but uh like I said, I mean eventually they open it back up, so But this you know, this is my first time being like in uh in the academic world for you know, outside of the military, like it's been close to 20 years, man. Like, I don't know what's, I don't know what's changed. It doesn't seem like a whole lot's changed, but who knows? Who knows? I'm just going to give that a little pat down. This is weird. Like tattooing on my arm, like it's nothing. Think about that. Think, think about I've been thinking about like what tattoo would I get? Like I was going to put this a little bit lower and then I was like, are numbers a career ender? You know, I wish, I wish that I'd actually seen Shawshank. I know that's wrong. That's like, I think that's a sin that I haven't seen it, but. It's not going to translate well. I should have done that on the inside or the outside. So the line, the uh, little triangle part inside the uh, the floor, just see so you guys tracking what it is I'm talking about, is a little too tight. I mean, I'll know it's a four, but over time, that area is going to fill in wonky. I mean, the cool thing is, is I can just touch it up, but you know, it's still not uh, optimal. So I am going to be filling this in as well. And for that, I might be using, ah, get it for, I might be using a seven, oh crap. Tell you what, this is different. It's a different angle, you know. I feel better about not having the camera on my uh, crotch. But at the same time, like, I can really get close to it where I don't feel like I can get like I should be able to get a lot closer, but there's really, there's no point since I don't have the stabilization of another hand. I don't know if that makes any sense. I know, I know. I really should watch it, but.
This is red. This is like my favorite part of the day. Smooth it out, gotta smooth it out. It's so weird not having the other hand. I mean, I do, but I'm like, it's in use right now. You know what I mean? This might be like a 15 minute tattoo. Who would have thought? I say that and then I'll end up like washing it and then all the ink will just pour out of it. And I'll be like, no, just like always, just like every single time. And not, I mean, I might, I might end up using the same needle to fill this in if using the seven doesn't work out right. But hopefully the seven works out right. Then I'll be like, what else can I tattoo? And one of these days I'm going to freehand something. I really am. Not like freehand, like straight to tattoo, but like take like a, like some markers or something and just like draw something crazy and then just do it, you know? Okay. So the other needle is a different, different company. Remember, I don't know if you saw me poke it, like, you know, showing how far it was sticking out. This one, like, I just put it in. <sighs> My machine does not like these these needles. Look how, look, like, that's barely poking out at all. You see that? Look at that. It's crazy. So I have to tighten this one back down. Not tighten, but... It's like adjusting it to be more full, I guess. All right. So that's it, like fully adjusted. Like that is not my optimal length, but whatever. You do what you do. All right. So I'm trying to do this right this time. Uh, and <laughs> like I haven't been doing it right the rest of the time, but I really want to ensure Maybe it's just these cartridges. These things are just terrible. All right, so I really want to ensure that I get this in there proper like. The ink has actually got to come out though. I'm gonna to have to not do this the proper way. Do this the old fashioned way. The old fashioned, not cool way. All right, Let's see if we can get some ink out of it this time. Yeah, there we go. See the spatter I get? That's from dipping the needle or the cartridge into the ink while it's running. I found this out, did a lot of research, trying to figure out like why my crap was not working out right. Why am I getting all this spray everywhere? And the spray, especially on these smaller tattoos, makes it a lot more difficult to see. Oh yeah, this is gonna take some some technique. I'll show you what I mean. So that is not a deep dark black, right? That's not even close. So, so I gotta stay within the lines that I drew. You see how the skin's like vibrating? That's a lot of trauma to the skin. I'm and I'm pointing all this stuff out because if you guys decide to get a tattoo and you go somewhere 
and you can look down and see your skin doing that, you might want to find a different different artist. I'm not bad mouthing myself, right? I'm just saying, yeah, I'm gonna have to go in with the. Uh, I might be able to get these parts. Yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to badmouth myself. I'm just not like like you can see me trying to pull. Like I've got my wrist flexed, my wrist flexed, my my wrist flexed and I'm trying to pull the skin tight. But you lose a lot of stability whenever you're just using your fingers on this I really don't want to do this, but I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to use that little tiny needle. The reason I don't want to do that, one, now I have to readjust the machine again for the proper needle. But the other part is uh, it's a tiny needle. Like, I have to stab myself a bajillion times. So let's see where I'm at here. Yeah, all right. Look, just a teeny tiny, teeny bit, like this much of the, uh, the crazy butter on there. And that's going to allow me to have a little bit easier to clean up whenever it does spatter, because guess what? We're dipping the we're dipping that uh, cartridge in. So chances are this also gives me just a little bit. This is gonna suck. What I want is I want a really good full I want it to be like really full black. You know? like I'm trying to fill that space up. There's a lot of a lot of tattoo artists will um, they'll use like this a similar technique to bold their lines. So they actually will draw if, it, if it's meant to be a bold line, they'll draw two smaller lines side by side and then go in and fill it in. Just a little, just a little, just a little tidbit there for you guys. What I'm doing whenever I take my hand away is I'm actually taking the paper towel. Uh, yeah, yes, it will. It it. Most definitely will um, until I can figure out like maybe if I if I put a piece of tape on either side of it to pull it tight. I don't know some something along those lines. I just have to be inventive about it. Uh, I really wanted this one to be pretty simple though, because like I said, I mean the whole idea is that in the uh, 
the heat of the moment whenever it comes to you know having like any kind of PTSD or anxiety attack or anything like that like or even you know just being stressed out like you know I have I, I normally forget forget that you know I have I have an option I have an alternative to just sucking it up Um, so this is, I don't know if you caught that or not. This is like the, my breathing technique. Yeah. Yep. I, you know, I wanted to do something besides just put numbers there, you know, like just some, something, right? Like it didn't have to be anything super fancy, but, uh, I think that this is for me it's it's nicer to look at than just some numbers like you know I, I don't want to make light of uh you know people that have pride in their area codes or you know people <laughs> people that have tattoos for other reasons you know like uh I I kind of wanted it to stand out from that that kind of thing You know, I mean, it's, I'll admit, like, it is kind of embarrassing, I guess. Like, not like embarrassing, embarrassing. It's just, you know, like, there's a certain pride to being able to control your, uh, yourself, right? And whenever you find yourself in a, an environment where you lose that control, like, that sucks. So this is kind of a, a way of maybe not gaining that control back, but coming to terms with the environment and understanding, you know, I'm not in any danger, nothing life-threatening, blah, blah, blah. I say blah, 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 like it's nothing, but dude, let me tell you, sometimes, sometimes reality uh, is not at all involved in what you get hit with. It hits hard. So it's good to, it's good to just have something simple and something to be proud of. <laughs> right. I know, man. That's why I can't do that work anymore. Cause it is like that every day at work. All right, let's see. I still see some spots that definitely need a little bit of help. But uh but overall, man, like I I kind of like this. This isn't this isn't too bad. One thing that I haven't been able to really get down just yet is understanding like you can see like especially around this area, well, if you look at right where the needle's going <laughs> um it's a lot more difficult to shade or to fill and i'm going to tell you why because the skin welts up right where you put your outline well hey where'd you guys go are y'all drunk y'all need to stop stop drinking um hey now you can see even better Happy accident. Boom. Thanks, man. But getting in here is like such a pain. Yes. I will say that after a little while, though, like the area that you're going over again and again, um, kind of goes numb. I think this is one of those that's like small enough, like it's not going to like get a ton of attention.
I mean, you know, this is definitely something a mom would notice, you know, like, oh, hey, honey, how you doing? It's been a long time since we've talked. What the hell is that? You know, but like. Not that bad. I got I to make more complicated designs. Like seriously, like what is this? Look at that, my cat, my cat decided to join in. What are you doing? Let's try to eat the microphone. Can you, uh, there you go. Something else got her attention somewhere else. There she goes, she's gone now. That was, uh, that was Marmalady. Lady. Because she's the color of Marmalade. And she's a lady. She is. She is a lady. Yeah, good old marbles. The other thing is, is she actually makes that noise. Ooh, you guys almost fell down again. I swear, man. Y'all have to. I'm really going to have to like. I might have to have an intervention for you guys or something. Such a tiny, itty bitty little needle to be doing this with. I might spice this one up at some point in time too. You know, maybe maybe add some highlights or something. I thought about doing it in some kind of color, but I couldn't figure out anything that made any sense to me. I'm sure they're, you know, like I could have done like a a blue for breathing in. Uh, like a green for holding it or something. I don't know. And, and I just, <laughs> oh, you just made me tattoo myself in a weird spot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, I have to admit, like, I'm a little, I'm a little gun shy about like turning the, uh, turning the machine onto somebody else. Um, I mean, I think, I think I can do it. Don't get me wrong. I just feel like. You know, okay. So I think I think that's about I think that's about it. That's it. I think we're good. Um, but I just feel like if I uh, if I mess up, like I'm trying to I'm trying to experiment and do all the things on myself, right? Like color fill. Uh, I want to play with gradient. I want to play with blend, um, shade, shadow. You know, highlights, um, clean lines. Thick lines, thin lines, like all that kind of stuff. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Really do. I really appreciate it. Um, but you know, if I don't, if I don't do that on real skin, like I can do it like on the fake skin, but if I don't do it on real skin, I'm not really going to know what's going on with it. Oh, I definitely don't want to be like, okay, first tattoo on somebody else. 
I wonder what that's going to be like. You know, I want to know <laughs> exactly. But I do still have a picture of your bean frog in my uh, photo album. So on my phone. So uh, <laughs> it's I mean, it's a simple design. Don't get me wrong. Like, I understand. I get it. But like, I don't want to like tear up your skin doing it, you know, filling it in with color and I don't want to mix the wrong color, you know, so I'll just keep making a couple here. I went ahead and put some of the, uh, the butter on there. So it's a little bit, a little bit cleaner there. I have a feeling that I could have rounded out that one top four just a little bit more. We'll work on that another time. We'll see how much of this sticks over the next two weeks. And uh, after two weeks, I'll come back. I'll touch it up. But yeah, um, one-handed, no anchor, tattoo, do not suggest, not at all. If you go to a one-handed tattooist, make sure that that one-handed tattooist has been doing it for years with one hand, because that's, that's different. That, that's a lot different than what I'm used to on my legs. I'm going to assume that you mean that you shouldn't drink caffeine <laughs> before a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i haven't really heard that i i think that it probably i can imagine that you know you're putting your your body under a lot of stress um so maybe maybe that's the aspect of it um i don't know i think also caffeine caffeine is has been known to uh accentuate pain like to to bring out more uh if you're in pain it it livens the nerves. So that might be the other aspect of it. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, that's, that's probably more like it though. Like people want to minimize their, their uh, discomfort as much as possible. And that's understandable, especially if you're getting something big, intricate in a sensitive spot, you know, something like that. So um, yeah, that's probably it. I'd imagine. Um, they do make, you know, I don't, I don't mean to make that face whenever I say it, but they do, they do make like a, a, a topical, you know, rub that you can put on, um, that will help numb the skin. Uh, from what I understand, from what I've heard, uh, it works really well. Um, and there's really, there's, there should be, there should be a normalization of comfort, <laughs> honestly, whenever you're getting stuff like this done. So uh, you know, I mean, I, I kind of feel the same way, but maybe that's because of the reason that I'm doing this, you know, like, um, like I want to be connected as much as possible to the process. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, Speaking of staying still, I've, I've heard of people who can actually fall asleep during tattoos. That's pretty amazing. I mean, I imagine it's it's probably not that difficult. Uh, it's like acupuncture, except on speed, you know, and I've fallen asleep during acupuncture. So, I mean, I, I might be able to fall asleep during a large tattoo, especially like whenever I was, you know, going over uh some of these spots over and over again. And I was saying that like the more you go over it, it's like the more numb it, it becomes anyway until you start doing weird things like pushing in to add highlights and stuff like that. Um, or, you know, trying to blend color over something that you've gone over a thousand times with like a, a lighter wash or something. And then you're trying to blend something else in there. Yeah. That grates, that hurts pretty bad. I probably wouldn't be able to sleep through that, but <laughs> Hey, look, my cat again. There she is doing, looking herself, cleaning herself. At least she's hygienic, right? She's sterile. Sterile. She's been spayed. Does that make her sterile? Anyway, I don't know. But yeah, um, yeah. I, uh, drunken botany. If you, if you could, if you could ask, uh, if you could ask her. If that's if that's what she's heard, as far as like the pain and caffeine, because that's probably scientifically like that's probably more along the lines of the truth rather than it being a shock to the system. But yeah, shading shading sucks. 
Um, I've done like some very minor shading on, on myself and I'm like, Oh, you know, that, that blended pretty well. You know, it was very light, no, no problem. And then like three days later, the, like this area, like this whole quarter inch area around whatever it is that I was shading is just like peeling. Like, <laughs> like what the hell? Like it's all raised up and everything while I'm working on it. And I'm like, ah, this feels like sandpaper on the skin. Um, and then like, you know, I look at it and I'm like all of that for such a, you know, <laughs> such a minor little nuanced thing. And, you know, I've got a lot of, I've got a, a lot of body hair like whenever this stuff grows back all these little tiny like nuanced like details that i put in they're gone they're like it's it's gonna be like uh you know like trying to trying to paint a symbol on the ground in the middle of a forest and expecting somebody from a helicopter to see it like it is just not it's not showing up um that's that's just the truth so <laughs> um but yeah uh, really, I don't, I mean, yeah, I don't think so. I think alcohol, alcohol will make you bleed more. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely. I mean, everyone, you know, everyone says, oh, don't, don't go to your, you know, try to get a tattoo, uh, while you're drunk. Um, don't, yeah, don't, uh, one, you'll make a bad decision. Uh, you might see somebody's stick figures on a pad of paper and be like, yeah, man, that's cool. Put it on me, you know? Um, but also like you will bleed profusely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Caffeine, if anything, uh, you know, uh, blood vessel constriction, especially, you know, at the, uh, the capillary size, like, um, it pulls, it pulls the blood away from the skin at more than anything I would imagine. Um, and the only reason I say that, you know, is from like first responders, she should know, uh, medically more about that than what I would, but I believe that that constriction would probably pull the blood further back rather than pushing it toward the surface. Um, I would say if anything, it's probably because it's a stimulant and it, you know, stimulates. So the nerves will be more stimulated. Um, but other than that, like, I mean, but I drink like all kinds of stuff whenever I'm tattooing myself. Um, you know, I mean, I'm never wasted. Like I don't come on here, like, you know, even slightly buzzed and be like, Oh, here we go. Bunch of needles in my skin. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I, and I can see the tremors too. Uh, so again, another little tiny, uncomfortable, uh, you know, little, little tidbit, a lot of the medications that I'm on, um, well, not a lot. Some of the medications that I'm on actually cause like, uh, uh, like jerking, like, you know, just, you know, unwanted, like muscle spasms. So well, I'm trying to get all those like little tiny details in. And then all of a sudden you'll see me like, whoop, and I'm like, Oh, Ooh. And then, you know, I check and I, I have yet to make an accidental mark. So there is that. Well, that's not true. So I do have a spot on my wrist. It must have been from like three weeks ago. But like, I must have just like barely just like went, you know, right outside of my glove or something. And I've got like a little green line. I'm pretty sure it had, it had to be, you know, an accidental tattoo. So... I can mark that on my tally for a tattoo, I suppose. That's number, you know, 29 or whatever. I don't know. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm not really – I don't really have a – I mean, tomorrow's will be more complicated, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I feel bad. My last two were just like – uber quick half an hour on one like pretty much half an hour on the other like it could have been done quicker but i didn't have it like i didn't have an anchor you know so my hands just kind of like floating on buzzing skin you know i mean i i really honestly like the best way to put it is like whenever the skin is bouncing like that so it's it's bouncing and some of the needles are going in and some of them aren't and then the skin's like slapping 
up against the needles and maybe it's going in then or, or whatever. Yeah, some of my others are long. Some of them are long for no reason. Like, honestly, like some of the, I mean, I, well, I shouldn't say no reason. Like they're long because I didn't know what I was doing. So I've overworked. I haven't, I haven't fully blown anything out. Possibly, maybe the flower on the boxer. I'm, I'm very upset about that one. Um, but like I, I have overworked some stuff and like it shows like in the healing process, it shows. So, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And instead of layering some things, you really should just block out like, you know, some, some things like if you know, you're going to be using a dark blue here and a light blue there, then don't do light blue and then do dark blue over the top of it like you would with you know like you can do that with like colored pencils or paint or something like that i don't suggest doing it on the skin so you know there there you go there you go joy like you know that's a that's a big one right there if i would have tried like any kind of uh, overlay or shading on you before i did it on me you'd be hating me because you just have a big giant like colorful scab and a lot of choice words to share with me. So that's a lesson that I've learned on me on my inner thigh twice now. So <laughs> at least I didn't learn it on somebody else in uh, you know, another weird spot. So all right guys, uh I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. 45 minutes down and uh and you know I feel like a fairly successful small tiny tattoo uh, with a lot of meaning behind it, a lot of good conversation, friends, uh, you know, and uh, and and I appreciate you guys showing up and and showing your support. Um, yeah, man, thank you. I appreciate it. As always, they they do look better in real life. So um, hopefully, one of these days here, I'll just go ahead and lay that in there. Uh, one of these days, I'll actually be able to see uh, you guys in real life again. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you for the, the good job. It means a lot. It really does. It really does. So, uh, well, I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow uh, around the same time. And like I said, I'll try to find something a little bit more uh, uh, complicated. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the love, man. Good night. And I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.